Welcome to season four of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we discuss business agility through customer experience, employee experience, and digital transformation. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom. The Agile World Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to techsystems.com. To read more about the topics discussed on this show, you can go to my website at gregkillstrom.com and read my latest articles or get a copy of my latest book, Meaningful Measurement of the Customer Experience, now available on Amazon and other retailers. My name is Greg Kilstrom, and I'm the host of the Agile Brand Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the value of storytelling for brands that continue to evolve as the role of technology continues to grow within even the most established of industries. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome John Ebert, Manager of North American Public and Industry Relations at John Deere, a company that was founded in 1837 and continues to evolve and innovate as its image continues to shift from being an equipment company to the tech company it truly is at heart. John, welcome to the show. Yeah, glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Greg. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this with you. Um, Why don't we start by uh, you giving a little background on yourself as well as what you're currently doing at John Deere. Yeah, absolutely. So I currently, uh, as mentioned, am the North American Public and Industry Relations Manager uh, for John Deere. And, you know, I'd start by saying, and I say this to everybody when I first meet them, is, you know, the best part of my job is being able to, to storytell and tell the, the great work that those in our company are doing and the work that we're doing on behalf of, of farmers. And, uh, you know, I've been a deer for going on 13 years. Uh, I, I started out kind of in the uh, in the realm of marketing, and I've had different jobs kind of buried within R&D of the company, uh, but but really the the constant, whether I've been working with tractors or with combines or out in the field with John Deere dealers, uh, the constant in my time at the company is I've kind of been at the intersection of the equipment and the tech and how that's coming together uh, to help uh, help farmers. So uh, it's been a it's been a great time at the company and. Uh, you know, I've, I've enjoyed uh, being at that intersection. Um, what's been really unique for me, Greg, is uh, I grew up on a farm. So I uh, grew up with a multi-generational multi-genera- farm, farming family that uh, had John Deere equipment and agriculture was a big part of my life, which is why, you know, I sought out education in both uh, the, the science of farming plus uh, economics of agriculture. And it eventually uh, led me here to John Deere. Great, great. Well, let's dive in here and start by talking about the value of storytelling. So in its over 180 year history, John Deere uh, surely has plenty of stories to tell. Uh, How are you using storytelling to position the company as an innovator and leader in its space? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, And and like I said before, I mean, one of the best parts of, of the role that I'm in today is being able to tell the stories of the great work that our technologists are doing, um, as well as the work that it's that it's providing or the value that it's providing to, to farmers that use our technology. And so, you know, as you think about our company being over 180 years old, right? It's easy to easy to say, hey, there's probably a lot of cool stories out there. Um, but the cool part is is that right now today. Um, there is such advanced uh, technology and innovation happening in the work that we're doing that's helping farmers really do more with less and helping them become more profitable and more sustainable. Um, you know, as you think about the value that we're uh, able to unlock for farmers, um, at the same time, there's innovation that's just core within the DNA of the folks that are working on this technology within our company. And when you kind of can combine um like the, the tough job that farmers have, right? They're, they're faced with challenges each and every day, many outside of their control, like what's the weather going to do today? And then you kind of couple that with the, the great, um, you know, if, if you look at like computer vision and artificial intelligence and that, that innovation, uh, it's not just cool. It's, it's actually technology with a purpose that's helping those farmers kind of control the uncontrollable um, to make sure they're having more successful outcomes. So where I get to sit in telling that story is that most folks that maybe haven't been to a farm or don't know a lot about John Deere, um, it really is eye-opening when you start to peel back those different layers to say, wow, like De- Deere is, is truly a tech company and we're doing some of the most innovative things, not only within our industry, but all industries that uh, really are helping uh, farmers do, uh, do the great work of putting food on, on our table. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, and to follow on to that, uh, one recent highlight is your unveiling at CES, which in and of itself is, uh, you know, maybe a non-traditional choice for a company like John Deere to to showcase that. But, you know, unveiling at CES, um, you unveiled a fully autonomous tractor. So putting a real example of innovation, as, as you were just saying, in a very public setting. Can you talk a little bit about the story there and why you think it was important for John Deere to make a showing in this way? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if you probably would have stepped into my role, Greg, say, say 30 years ago, it looked a lot different, right? I mean, we, yeah. we looked at storytelling, you know, directly to the audience of farmers, per se, or directly to the audience of uh, dairy and livestock producers. And, and what we've done here over the last, you know, five or so years is we say, how do, how do we shift that story in, into a way that's going to educate a new audience, Right, because when you when you think of who's at CES, it's the technology community, and 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 you know we believe we've got a pretty powerful story to tell within that within that arena. So it's been a, a deliberate shift in focusing our attention on that new audience. So uh, CES has been a great avenue and venue for us to to get on you know tech's big stage at CES and and really build relationships with that community that community. And what it's done for us, I mean, it, we're on a multi-year, uh, you know, journey of being at CES. This was the, the third year that we've participated in CES in person. And, and this year was a very exciting year. We approached it even differently as we brought uh, the reveal of an autonomous tractor uh, to the show. So uh, it, was, it was great in how we were able to uh, focus our attention on what not only automation is doing, but the importance of autonomy in helping farmers feed the world. And so you kind of touched on uh, on how this, uh, you know, how some of these opportunities tell the, you know, help you tell the John Deere story in, in new ways. But, you know, what are some of the benefits of reaching those audience? I mean, obviously the CES crowd is a, in many ways might be a different um, audience than some of the other shows and and more industry focused things that you that you attend as well. So what what are what are the benefits to John Deere that of uh, you know being able to tell a story to this this crowd in this way? Yeah, you know I think for, first and foremost it's it's that we're there to advocate uh, for farmers, right? And you know it's it's relatable to all of us because we all do have to eat, and that kind of that comes first and foremost. But um, as as you said, like how do we uh, like what's the importance for deer in telling that story? It's, it's really to educate as well, because, um, like I said, there, there could be a, a, a misconception, right. That, that deer builds tractors, but it's so much more than that. And, and we've seen that journey over the years that we've been at CES. If I think back to the first, well, actually the first time we were at CES, we were kind of tucked away in a closet behind a staircase and <laughs> nobody really knew who we were and we didn't really, you know, know what conversations to have. But the first year we showed up with a booth uh, four years ago with a combine, I would say the, the, the most interesting uh, stories we would tell at the end of the day were, uh, were to go around the room and say, like, what's the oddest question you got that day? And, and so often we would get the question of, why is John Deere here? Like, I know I've seen the brand. I think you guys build tractors, but why are you here? And if you fast forward, Greg, to where we were at this year, uh, there was literally no question that came in that was, why is John Deere here? People were coming into our booth saying, I want to see what you guys are telling us this year and show us the autonomous tractor and what's new and exciting that you guys are delivering for farmers. And so the conversation has just changed so much over the past four years. So I really think that opportunity to educate uh, that audience um, with tech that, that matters has been just really, really motivating and important for us. That's great. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, you know, having having the 180 plus year history definitely has some benefits to it, right? So, you know, you've got you've got a wealth of stories and even to be able to show that, you know, how you've approached innovation throughout that time period. But, you know, sometimes there's challenges to having such a long history as well. Um, so, you know, what what are some of the challenges um, of having a long history and how do you overcome some of the maybe preconceived notions that have built up um, over, you know, over 
nearly two centuries when positioning Don, John Deere as an innovative um, industry leader that it actually is. Yeah, I, I love that question, right? Because I actually look at what you could perceive as a challenge with a uh, company that's been around for, you know, coming up on 200 years um, as, as a challenge and being perceived as innovative. But, but really, Greg, it's about the fact that those challenges are opportunities for us. Um, you know, there, there really are, uh, as I mentioned before, as you think about telling the story of John Deere being a tech company, I mean, it's real, right? It's, it's authentic. We, we are a tech company and uh, we, have, we have the proof points that are in market at scale, delivering value and doing some pretty awesome, pretty cool, just, just crazy stuff if you were out at the farm and could, could see it happen in action. Um, so those, those challenges are really opportunities as we tell that story. You know, if I, if I boil it down, though, to the, the farmer or focus on that, right? I mean, I think there is at times in different circles, there's a misconception around who a farmer is or what a farmer does. And uh, this misconception maybe that farmers have on overalls and pitchforks and, you know, are out like uh, doing stuff manually all the time, that, that is not the, the reality of what a real farm is. And so what we, and I'll use CES as the example again, you know, we can't, we can't bring everybody that goes to CES to the farm and we can't have all this cool equipment at every tech show that happens throughout the year. But what we can do is we can start to like unlock different, different engagements. Like we're, we say we're storytelling, but we're actually just putting together uh, new ways to, to unlock that story so that we're kind of breaking that, that misconception that it's not the farmer standing there with a pitchfork, like farmers are consumers too. I mean, they've got, smartphones in their pocket that they're managing their farm and their farm decisions from. And it's, it's really fun and engaging to have those conversations at CES and some of the other events that we, that we attend um, to do that education and to see the light bulbs go off of what a modern farm looks like and how this technology is helping those farmers do their job, make their, make their lives easier, spend more time with their family. Um, and have a better business and outcome at the end of the year. That's great. That's great. So another factor in telling stories is, you know, ensuring authenticity in, in the stories. So, you know, you need to ensure that the message you're putting out is based on the true culture of the organization, the true direction of the organization. How has the culture of John Deere influenced the way that you talk about innovation and agility? This, this is not uh, a case where uh, we have to go like dig deep, right? To find an authentic story. Yeah. Um, like there is just such great work happening uh, within, within our company. There's such a great purpose and why we're doing what we're doing and why it makes sense to apply uh, s- smart technology to machines to, to do these jobs for the betterment of of the world that we all live in. So to go try to find an authentic story within deer, it's, it's not hard. Right. So that, that part is kind of as yeah. foundational, you know, as I think about the culture of our company, and as you look back, you know, 20 plus years ago, we, we founded a group called the precision farming group. So really we started out uh, with a couple of engineers back in 1993 that started to figure out, you know, how do we start to put some, technology on a machine that's going to help a farmer make better decisions on their farm. And one thing led to the, led to another, and it's been, you know, kind of an exponential uh, growth of, of building what, what we call today a smart machine. Um, You know, aside from that, we've got, you know, really just an environment of, you know, we've been doing agile for a number of years. If you go back 10 years ago to our intelligent solutions group, uh, that's the, the group of folks that, that do a lot of the software uh, work around around our smart machines. You know, if you stepped back into one of their offices ten years ago, they were doing this thing called called Agile, right? And we were yeah. having hackathons, and and so that that culture has been growing and evolving over the last ten years. And one of the more more recent proof points is, you know, we've at, at the highest level of our company shifted to what we're calling a smart industrial model. So it's not just if within one particular, you know, I'll say innovation group in a back corner of a building, uh, smart industrials really are out around reorganizing our entire company uh, to be more agile, to kind of uh, shift our thinking to 
make decisions quicker, to get products out the door faster. And that all happens by uh, just this culture that we've grown into over the last 10 years. So, you know, as I think of that question of, you know, how are we telling authentic stories? It, I don't want to say it's like falling in my lap, Greg, or my job's <laughs> easy, but uh, we've got a lot of great, uh, like I said, a lot of great technologists that um, are doing great work. And we've got a strategy that's pointed to an area that's helping us deliver this stuff faster and more innovative than we did yesterday. And uh, that's what helps us uh, take that story and activate it within the different events and public relations activities that we get involved in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great to hear. And I guess maybe the inverse question to, to, to that, as far as, you know, one, one is storytelling based on things that currently exist and are authentic. The other might be, let's call it aspirational. Um, you know, so I think, um, does putting forth an, an innovation and technology brand also kind of spur further, you know, does it kind of feed on that culture that already exists? It sounds like there's already a great culture of innovation and, and using technology to, to make things, to make things better. But can it also be a North star where not only current employees within the organization, but also I would imagine, you know, going to a show like CES, um, even from a talent perspective, you're probably attracting a lot of people that, you know, for one reason or another, don't, aren't currently considering, uh, you know, they're looking at the, you know, the big tech company, you know, the big software companies in the world. They're not necessarily considering other innovative companies like John Deere. Um, what, you know, what role does storytelling and, and, and the brand play in that aspirational component as well? It's a, it's a really important point. Um, I, I think you started to, to hit on it pretty well there, right? I mean, as, as you think about, like, if your company is looking at the work that you do and you're trying to figure out how to, like, brand around innovation and tech and the great work that you're doing, um, like, when you put a plan together and have the focus on, like, what your purpose is and telling that story to the right audience you've identified... I mean, what happens is you naturally have employees within your organization that that see that storytelling, buy into that culture, uh, get excited and motivated uh, by the work that's happening uh, because of the outcomes that you get from the different events that you might activate. So, uh, again, I'll go back to to CES, right? As we as we build out our plans, and, and when I say our plans, right, we, we have our booth that we design. Uh, this year we did a press conference because we brought in some new news. And as you activate that and you have different employees, you know, we, we select about 20 folks within the organization that are spokespersons that, that help us get that message out at CES. And uh, when you see those stories come to life in the engagements that we do with you know, it could be a social media influencer. It could be in an, in an article or a, uh, a media interview. Um, it, we talk about it internally, right? We, we, uh, we focus on bringing the show back to our internal employees just as much as we focus on getting that narrative out externally. And so we collaborate with a, with a communications team internally and we do stand-ups uh, for internal employees. And you can see the excitement and the engagement from our internal employee base. And I think that goes a long ways towards building a culture that's, you know, motivated and inspired because they know that the work they're doing every day connects back to some higher purpose. Yeah. And I also think, I mean, I, I think that's a phenomenal idea. And I also think that that makes it, I would imagine makes it feel more real for the employees as well. So in other words, it's not just a show you take on the road, it's something that you talk about internally and, uh, and stuff like that. So I would imagine that, you know, that does feed the internal enthusiasm, which is so important. And, you know, with everything going on these days with, you know, the need for, for better organizational culture and more, more motivation and stuff, I can, I can imagine that that greatly helps there. Yeah, ab absolutely. It sure does. I mean, the world, as, as you and I both know, it's changed a lot in the last, uh, last yeah. couple of years and, you know, we may be working more from home or from wherever we have an internet connection. So, uh, yeah, this has been a steady for us, I would say, as, um, you know, it being easy to uh, come to work and know the work that you're doing uh, matters, right? Not only for 
um, you and your individual team that you might be uh, doing some software work on for a product, but you're impacting, you know, uh, farmers. And oh, by the way, it's it's got a pretty pretty cool and impactful outcome for uh, for everybody in the world. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well, one last question before we wrap up here: uh, What would your advice be to let's say someone in a similar role at a at another brand might be might be established, but um, as opposed to John Deere, maybe they're having a hard time finding kind of where to start with their brand hey, story and telling, yeah. you know, telling the right story. Where, where should they start looking for ideas? Yeah, absolutely. Greg, my, my first piece of advice would be that they, they have to look internally, right. And they have to network within their own company. And that doesn't happen by just reading um, some messages on Slack. It doesn't happen by just reading the, the company, uh, you know, newsletter that comes out once a week, you, you have to, you have to go sit down and talk to those folks in your company that are, that are doing the work and uh, really understand exactly what they're doing. And, and I guarantee you, you're going to be surprised within your own company, the, the types of things that are happening across various functions. And, and I think as you start to learn, you'll start to uh, form your own consensus on the different stories that you have that are there. And, and then the other piece of advice would be, you know, think hard about who you're talking to today. Like who, who is your audience? And as you think about your company's strategy and, and where you're going, are you lining up some of the great work that's happening, that strategy of your company to the, to the right audiences that you're trying to hit? And, and I think as you, you ideate on that and you put your plans together, you're going to find out that there's a, just a number of opportunities there in how you are representing your brand through various types of activations externally. That's great. Well, John, uh, thanks so much for joining the show. Uh, for those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with you and, and what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, they could certainly find me on uh, LinkedIn, uh, shoot me a message and uh, reach out. would be happy to engage. Wonderful. Well, again, I'd like to thank John Ebert, Manager, North American Public and Industry Relations at John Deere for joining the show. Thanks for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom. Talk to you next week. Thanks again for listening to The Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www dot the agile brand dot show to get a copy of my latest book meaningful measurement of the customer experience visit my website at gregkillstrom.com until next week stay agile